All right, so the deception, power sources, and the second heaven. So we, we know, I mean, this is no secret, that there's nowadays there is so many strange things going on in the churches. Really, um, very weird manifestations. People are running after all sorts of power stuff and manifestations. And um, they're believing it's God. Anything supernatural must be God. And so what we need to understand, what I want to show you today is so that you really understand that there is a second heaven that copycats the third heaven. And it's a very fine line, and you have to be really awake to, to discern what is going on in the second heaven and what, what we see in the church and what is given to us as third heaven, the anointings. We see that all kingdoms have levels of authority, governors of territories and regions. Now, we've spoken about kingdoms. That was our first lesson. Now we see it. there's levels of authority. There are governors of territories and regions and so forth. And so 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2 says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or out the body, and Paul didn't even know what was going on. He said, I don't know. God knows. But this man was caught up to the third heaven. Now, we know that the Freemasons and the occultic wor world and the New Ages speak of seven, seventh heaven, seven heavens. And they always say, oh, I'm so happy I'm in the seventh heaven. Now, that's not biblical. All right? That's occultic. And so we definitely don't want to be caught in the seventh heaven. All right. So we, we know that the Bible tells us there's three heavens. There are dimensions, different dimensions, and they reckon the scientists tell us there are about 10 dimensions that they're aware of. So, but the heavens, the actual heavens, there are three. So the third heaven, this is the home of Almighty God. So when we pray, we always say, Father, let whatever anointing, whatever miracles, whatever, Father, let it flow from the third heaven. Anybody operating in the second heaven, if you know how to pray, you can cut off his power source because the church is being defiled by people drawing on the second heaven and not discerning that this is not God because the devil will give power. So let's have a look. The second heaven is a dimensional reality between God's dwelling and our universe. Now, this is interesting. On the second heaven, you've got angels. Angels are there. They reside there. Both God's angels and fallen angels. This is where the war is taking place. Are, are you with me? In the second heaven. If we pray, then the angels of God come and they fight Satan's angels in the second heaven. So our war will be won or lost in the second heaven. Okay. And so you, if you've never read this book, This Present Darkness, you must get hold of it. It is brilliant. And you, when you start it, you can't put it down. It is brilliant. Piercing the darkness. Yeah, the two of them. It is excellent. You just can't put it down. And it gives you such a brilliant understanding of what really goes on in the spirit. And so when we pray, what happens, how they fight. And so it's in the second heaven where God's angels are fighting and Satan's angels are fighting for dominion over what's happening on earth. Because we, earthlings, are made in God's image, and Satan hates us. And it all depends, what do we choose? Because we've been given freedom of choice. So if we choose God's way, then God's angels fight for us. But if we choose Satan's way, then Satan laughs all the way. And so you need to understand how how it works in the spirit realm, this second heaven. 
Occultists have referred to this as the astral plane. So when you see the New Ages and when they fly and they leave their spirits, leave their bodies, and they go, where do they go? Second heaven dimensions. And that's where they have sex. They can have, you know, it meets with other spirits and entities. And there's a lady that was, uh, she was very much more in the spirit realm than what she was on earth. And she met with the ascended masters. And these ascended masters would tell her what it was going to be in the last days, how things were going to be. And she now is, you know, full on testifying and exposing all the stuff that was going, that was go that's going on in that realm. But it is, it's, this is the astral plane. So that is where people then, that's why I said when a person says I'm in the new age, how much ground did they give? How long were they there? You know, did they actually leave their bodies? Were they trained in that way? Were they flying around with the ascended masters? So it's important to understand how much ground was given. Then the first heaven, this is our universe. Okay, this is where we live, where man is on earth. So the second heaven is explained in the book of Daniel. And this is in Daniel 10, verse 12 to 13. I have come as a consequence of and in response to your words. So the angel is speaking to Daniel and he says, you prayed, I've come. He says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. He says, listen, Daniel, God actually heard you the first day that you were praying. But, you know, I had such a battle. And Daniel could have thought, you know, why did you let me fast 21 days if God had heard me on the first day already? But he was fasting for this angel to bring the message for him against the prince of Persia that was trying to stop him. And so we need to understand that God can release things from the throne room. But to get it through to us here on earth can take some time. And it can take prayer and fasting to break through for that answer to come. So many times people give up. You know, they start down the journey and when it doesn't work because we want instant things, they stop. They stop praying, they stop fasting, they give up, it doesn't work. And so here we see, but you know, this is a battle because now from the third heaven, this angel was sent, he had to fight through the second heaven and get to Daniel. And so then Michael, he said, I mean, I was fighting and I couldn't get past this prince of Persia. He wouldn't release me to get to you, to give you this message. And then Michael, one of the chief of the celestial princes, came to help me. I couldn't do this alone, Daniel. The enemy doesn't want you to get this message. This is such an important message. You know, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation run parallel. It's very prophetic. And so this is, we've got to learn what goes on in the spirit realm. Here the angel is bringing the message, but even Michael had to come and help, for I remained there with the king of Persia. And then, of course, he says, when I go back, I'm going to have to fight the prince of Greece. So the prince of the kingdom of Persia was a fallen angel who ruled over and empowered the kingdom of Persia. So this is no small guy. This is a huge principality. He is strong. He's not a demon. And as we go through the teaching, I'm going to show you the difference between a demon and a fallen angel. There's a difference. And so here we see this, this is a fallen angel. He doesn't, he, he's, he doesn't need a body to manifest. He doesn't need your body to manifest through. He can if he wants to, but he doesn't need it. He can manifest anyway, but a demon needs your body. Okay? But not these guys. These are big guys. These are the fallen angels. And so he ruled over the kingdom of Persia. And we see that angels do not desire to inhabit human bodies. They're not like demons. Okay? Just a, a quick rundown. When, oh, well, it's going to be... The whole Genesis 6 teaching that says that the fallen angels came and had sex with a woman, and she then fell pregnant, and then she gave birth to a Nephilim, 
okay? Now that Nephilim in the flood, when the flood came, the bodies that the Nephilim was in died. And so what are demons? They are disembodied. They don't have a body anymore. Nephilim. Are you with me? That is a demon. So that is why a demon needs a body to manifest. But a fallen angel doesn't need that. A fallen angel can manifest just like he wants to. Many times we've seen God's angels that have come in the form of a man and have given a message. All right, so they don't desire to inhabit human bodies. Their ranking is much higher than demons' rankings. The spiritual bodies that God gave them work perfectly fine, and they can manifest their presence in the earth without the need of a human host. Demons need a human body to manifest through, but not a fallen angel. All right. So let's have a look. We see... We have the third heaven, just a picture. That's where God lives, just for you to get the, the picture. The second heaven is where the battle is on, okay? F that whatever God releases from the third heaven down to us has to pass through the second heaven. And then we have the first heaven, which is what we know. This is uh, the man's, man's area. And then man on earth. Here we are praying. So let's have a look at the picture if I see man on earth, when I pray here, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So in the spirit, I'm there with God. And the enemy is under my feet. So many times when I pray and I want an answer from the Lord, the fight is here in the second heaven. And so the angels have to get the message through and the demons try and block them. The, the, the demons and the fallen angels try and block the messages coming through from the third heaven down to man, where we are waiting for answers to our prayers. All right, does that make sense? And many times when we've come into a place, if I can tell you there's been a lot of prayer for this week, because the heaven is open. I, I, I sense the heavens are open. It's flowing. Do you also sense there is an opening? There's really God is with us. We can sense his presence. And this happens when there's prayer. When there's been so king prayer, the heavens here, there is an opening and there's a flow that comes from the third heaven down to us. But if we've walked into places where this second heaven is so blocked. There's a whole demonic net cast, and it feels like, oh, Father, are we ever going to get through here? Because there's not enough prayer. So I really want to encourage you, get this present darkness and piercing the darkness from Frank Peretti, and it's going to explain to you what's going on in the second heaven. All right, so now we see that God's concept of a multiverse this is where we live. There's the third heaven where God lives. There's the second heaven where the principalities and powers are, where the battle among the fallen angels and God's angels take place. Then there's first heaven, our universe. Then, now we're going down. Now we're going to a place called Sheol. You've read this in the Bible. And this is a place of torment. And it's also was no, it's known in the Bible as Abraham's bosom and also outer darkness. So we'll still look at Sheol, and the, because when we do the captive spirit in the next lesson, you need to understand that there will be places where people are held captive in Sheol. Okay, another word for hell. Or in Tartarus is the place where the fallen angels, the 200 angels in Genesis 6 that uh, slept with a woman, have been held captive, but there's a time that they've been released. And um, there's, a, there's a pastor that has written a book. His wife, they didn't know, wife suffered um, terrible depression. And then when she was 37, she then discovered that she's a mind control victim. And they had to learn fast. And um, she was actually, they, they did mind control in this whole little village. This whole village was, was under military, and she worked in the military, and so it was all controlled. 
and, um, but I'll share more with you as we go along. And he's written a brilliant book that I'll bring so that you guys can see if you're interested. I waited ages to get hold of it um, because it was in such demand. But it's of the best teachings that I've read in all the years since we've started down this journey on mind control, on understanding the bigger picture. So this, uh, her husband, the pastor, um, he is now being invited to so many different talks and places. He's just, people are just um, really, you know, wanting to learn from him. And very interesting, his wife was praying one night and uh, really seeking God and desperate. She was suffered tremendous depression. And God said to her, you need to pray against the occultists. They're doing rituals against my feast. And she didn't have a clue what the Lord was saying. And so she went to her husband and she said, what feast is there? Is there a feast going on now? He said, well, it must be a Jewish feast. So they started to search up and found out that it was the Feast of Tabernacles. And God gave her the command, start praying because they're doing rituals against my feasts. And then God started to share with them about going back, getting out of Babylon and going back to his ways. And her husband speaks about it. It's powerful, powerful stuff. And I want to tell you, this is really the, an end time message. And it's just such confirmation of what God has been speaking with us as well, is returning to his ways. And as counselors, we're going to be looking at that. It's going to be one of our lessons as well. Let's see, hell or Sheol. There are two places of torment, Sheol, and then the bosom of Abraham with an impossible gulf between them. And so what you need to understand is that, um, remember the rich man? Um, and then he saw Lazarus that was at Abraham's bosom, but he couldn't get to him. And this was in Sheol. So the one place was Abraham's bosom, and the other place is the real place of torment. And then when Jesus, when he uh, rose from, from the dead, Remember he went to, when he was, was in Jerusalem, then there were a lot of people that were seen there that were already dead, and they saw them in the streets. And what he did was he emptied this side of Sheol, this Abraham, this bosom of Abraham. He went there and he fetched those people and he took them with him to heaven. So that, that's interesting. And then Jesus, okay, Jesus emptied Abraham's bosom at his resurrection. Then there's this outer darkness. Matthew 8, verse 12. While the sons and the heirs of the kingdom will be driven out into the darkness outside where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And then Tartarus is 2 Peter 2, 4, where God did not even spare angels that sinned, but cast them into hell, declaring them to be there in the pits of gloom. Tartarus until the judgment and their doom. Okay, Peter was referring to the angels who sinned, the watchers. These fallen angels were called watchers. And so it's the watchers who had sinned with human women to produce the original giants or titans of Genesis 6. And so this whole thing about Greek mythology, it's not mythology, it's not just a story, it's real. And this is a whole story of Genesis 6, where fallen angels came, had sex with women, and the Nephilim were birthed. And that's where the giants came from. So also known as the Nephilim or hybrids. Now, I, those of you that have listened to the teaching that I've done on Genesis 6, there's a whole lot of information and detail there. All right, let's just look again at the structure. You've got fallen angels, and then you've got Nephilim, and then you've got the humans. So you need to understand that a fallen angel is not a Nephilim. A fallen angel comes, has sex. Let me just go to the next slide. How are Nephilim created? You've got your fallen angels have sex with a woman on earth. And then what happens? The hybrids. So what they do, they take the body of the woman, uh, what, from the mother. All they take from her is the human box. But inside is Satan's seed. And remember in Genesis, God said to Satan, there will be enmity 
between your seed and the seed of the woman. And this is what is happening here. And so you can just see that what is a hybrid? It's a half fallen angel, half human. And it's happening today. And these are the people that Doug Riggs works with. And we all over the world, where we go, where we are ministering, we are ministering to these people that have brought forth hybrids into the world. It's scientific. Guys, this is on Google. This is known how they, they, they're busy with the hybrids and how they mix the animals with humans. Where they take, remember the cow that they took, the one of the clips where they took a cow and they took the gene to make breast milk and they planted it into the cow and now you can milk the cow and you milk breast milk. So this is the kind of stuff that they're doing. It's, it's, it's serious stuff, mixing seed. So let's see, remember, both God's angels and the fallen angels work in the second heaven, assisting in governing nations and people. So that second heaven is so important to understand. That's where the war takes place. Genesis 11 is the Tower of Babel was an attempt to reach the second heaven. And we think, you know, in your child mind, they were trying to build up to the heavens, so they had to build a tall, tall tower. They were trying to connect with second heaven. So it's a whole psychic thing. If you see this picture, you can just see, watch the, um, those, those, those um, electromagnetic things that's happening around that tower. You can see this is a power. They were trying to make a power source to connect with second heaven. Now, in these days, we really need to be grounded in the word and be on our guard against deception, asking for discernment. We've seen that the enemy always has a counterfeit to the real or the true godly. Whenever you see the en enemy manifesting strongly in an area, go and look, where's the true? We've learned this over and over. We were into Italy. And we had to counsel an um, old lady that was dying. And she'd gone and lay on every grave of the saints all over Italy. She'd gone to the catacombs. Now, you know, it's all dead, uh, uh, dead bones. It's the whole thing about bones. So we're praying and we're saying, Father, what is going on here? And the Lord clearly spoke and he said, bone magic. Now, I've never heard of bone magic, magic in my life. Google, hallelujah, so we Google, and here comes bone magician, the whole thing about bone magic, what goes on with the bones, and so if the enemy uses something strongly, go and look for where is it in the Bible, and then I did a study on the bones and the bone magic, and the whole teaching is also in a couple of our books that we've done um, on the study of bones and how to break bone magic, and dealing with the gates of hell, grave, de death, hell, and the grave. And th that's a powerful one where families are tied up and it's just death, death, death that you can break that cycle. And so this is a pattern we've learned where you see the demonic strong, go and check. Where did the enemy get this from? He can't conjure it up. So where is it in the real, in the true, in the godly? So with any or all anointings and, manifest, and the manifestation. There are people that use specific oils, saying this is the way you approach the Father and so you will be anointed. Now, I'm, I'm shaky about that because why must you... Um, God's given us a pattern. His pattern is the tabernacle. He's given us a pattern. Why must there be another pattern? Do you hear what I'm saying? God's not going to change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So now there's, there's this, you know, if, if you put the oil this way and you put it this way and you do this, then, then you're going to sense God. No. No, that's, that's, that's magic. That's ritual. And so there isn't anything like that. We need to be so careful that we are not deceived with patterns and ways and, I mean, so the use of anointing oils, if that is a magic thing, be careful. You know, when you go to Israel, then they say, no, buy this one. This is now really special oil. It's just oil. It's just oil. There's no magic to it. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? And so people, you know, get this holy water because if this water, this water, this is powerful water. So, you know, we, we really need to discern. And we know the way to approach the Father, to get into His presence, is the way of the tabernacle. And we'll see. I'll, I'll take you through it now so that you understand. So, when you experience visions, <clears throat> be very, very sure that it's coming from third heaven and not second heaven, where the enemy's operating. Very strong counterfeit. The mixtures there, arts and creativity and music. If that person hasn't been cleaned up, their gift can be defiled, and what they are producing is then mixed seed. You need to be so careful that they're not downloading. There's one lady I prayed with, and she was, um, she was programmed with the Da Vinci Code. So she could draw down the goddess. It was, she drew, if any magazine wanted a picture of Lady Di, they asked her. She could draw it down. She said, but she channeled. She was channeling the goddess. She knows the occultic powers. And so, yeah, art, be careful that the gift is cleansed. Music, when the musicians are there, the praise leaders, the praise worshippers, make sure they clean. Their gifts are clean. That the anointing is pure. That they're not tapping into second heaven anointing with charisma. And charm and manipulation, you know how the enemy can work. Prophetic words, you know, we've prayed with people that have been bound through prophetic words spoken over them 20 years ago. You're going to marry so-and-so, and it just never happened. They've been waiting 20 years for it. That wasn't from the Lord. And so, you know, you need to test. So if there's been prophetic words spoken over your life, there's been actions done, whatever it is, make sure it is Third heaven. And what I do is I, I just say to the people, take all your prophetic word, put it on God's altar, call the fire. And anything that is of the Lord will stay behind. But that which is not of God, burn it and destroy it. You don't want to be stuck with anything that comes from second heaven. So rather get rid of it than, than, than to be bound. Okay, we need to discern the power source. So godly anointings, or manifestations, prophetic creativity, etc. There are those that come from the Holy Spirit. There are those that come from third heaven. But if I don't understand the difference, I just accept everything that's coming. That it must be God. It must be third heaven, and it's not, not necessarily. But I do understand that the Bible teaches me that there were godly anointed artists that built the tabernacle, that made certain things for the tabernacle, like Bezalel and Aholia. Okay? They were anointed by God and filled with His Spirit for the work of the tabernacle. So this is third heaven. Can you see? This is pure gift. So it, we're not chucking everything away. We're saying to you, discern. And make sure that whatever gift it is that you're creative with, that it is third heaven and not second heaven. So there's false anointings. Um, the false prophetic creativity that is the counterfeit. Tapping into second heaven. If your bloodline is not clean and you're in ministry, you could be tapping in second heaven and prophesying and praying for people from second heaven anointing. And then it's not third heaven because you've never dealt with the demonic stuff in your bloodline. And so now it's open doors, and now it's just downloading from the second heaven. Okay, so we need to be aware and discerning of false Holy Spirit manifestations. All right, as I said to you, it can be gold teeth, it can be whatever. And if we, if we look at Matthew 24, 24, it says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise. And they will show great signs. I mean, it's, it's not going to be Mickey Mouse stuff. It's great signs and wonders, so as to deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect God's chosen ones. So it's not Mickey Mouse deception, this. It's big names. It's big guys. It's big ministries that are going to be deceived. The Lord is warning us. And so if we understand spiritual realm, we'll be able to pray. I mean, it gets confusing because you see something happening and you're saying, Father, what is this? Is this from you or is this demonic? 
But if you know how to pray and you cut off anything, power source coming from second heaven, immediately you will see the difference. You will be able to understand. It's, it's to be equipped to know how to pray. Revelation 16, 13. I saw three loathsome spirits like frogs leaping out from the mouth of the dragon and from the mouth of the beast and from the mouth of the false prophet. For really, they are spirits of demons that perform signs, wonders, and miracles. So it's, this is so clear. God is telling us this is going to happen around us. Have you ever wondered where some of the manifestations we are seeing today originate from? You know, where people, if it's just big bucks and it's just, you know, if you send your money now, you're going to da-da-da-da-da and you'll be healed and the signs and the miracles. And I run away when I see that. God doesn't work that way. You know, it's, it's like when they were peddling with money in, in, in the, the temple and Jesus took the whip. He got so angry and he cleaned out and he said, no, this is wrong. Okay, so gold dust, this is interesting. For example, it's found in Greek mythology and the only place where gold is dust is when they took the golden calf and they grind it to find dust. Isn't that interesting? That's the only place in the Bible it speaks about gold dust. And then they took the gold dust and they made a mixture. And the woman that was caught, that, that was caught in adultery and they wanted to know whether she is guilty, she had to drink the gold dust. And then her stomach would swell and all sorts of things. So that's the only place in the Bible that it speaks about gold dust. So why are we running after gold dust? You see, we need to, to just think. Let the Holy Spirit really speak to you. Gold dust, as well as fairy dust, is also used in voodoo. We need to also be on our guard against the kundalini spirit. Okay, that one you've, you've bumped into, you've heard. There's a whole prayer book on kundalini and all its manifestations. Kundalini is the false holy spirit, which is second heaven. That's the white snake. He looks like the true light, but he is not. All right, second heaven, Babylon. And what we see here is there's the child of God praying. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places, but what's going on in second heaven? If my bloodline is not clean, I'm still stuck in second heaven, and that's where I can be drawing powers from, and that can flow then into my everyday life and ministry if I'm in ministry. So that's why it's so important to deal with your past. Yes, pagan religions, if that hasn't been dealt with and those doors closed, you're tapping into second heaven anointing and bringing that into your ministry. And then, of course, man-made traditions. All right, we're not under the order of the Levitical order. We're under the order of Melchizedek. We're not under religious orders. No, we are following the Messiah, Jesus we have a living relationship with him. It's not into rituals and things. What then is the godly way to approach the Father? What, what must we then do? If they say, oh, do this and jump three times and then you're going to feel the anointing. <laughs> there was this one guy that went to a very big preacher. And this guy told him, you must take all these photos of me and go and put them up. You must have a prayer room just for me. So put it up and then burn these candles and this flame must never go out. And then you take these oils. Now, I don't know what he did with the oils. We spat in the one or what he did with the oils. But when you're in front of this picture, this is what you do. So you put this oil on and you rub yourself and you say these prayers. Then you move to the next station and then you, you do this and you do this and... And so it, he, did, he had to do his thing, and, then the, and he was not allowed to stand up straight. He had to crawl in front of this spirit of this guy. And he said, right at the end, right at the end, you wait for the anointing to come. And when the power comes over you, you're going to feel your hand's going to go like this. And when your hand starts going like this, then you know you're ready. You must now go and pray for the people. I've seen people fly through the air under this anointing. It is real stuff, but it's false anointing. 
It is real. So, so what is the way then to approach the Father? What is the way then that God has told us to come into his presence? It's the way of the tabernacle. He's never changed. And so for you and me, we see that the altar is where I lay down my life. I die to self. The second is the wash basin. It's where I repent of all my sins. I wash myself in the water of the word. I cleanse myself. Father, here I am. I give you my everything. Every breath I breathe is yours. And now, Father, I wash myself in the water of your word. The third is I move into the holy place where his word is as my menorah, where his word lightens up and I can now meditate upon his word. The altar of incense are my prayers. You know, where the incense stood between at that curtain before moving into the Holy of Holies. I see that that is where the incense and it would, the smell would be in the curtains and God would, you know, the, God would be the presence of the Lord. The ark is on the other side of the curtains. But that's where my prayers are going to the Father. And then the table of showbread is representative of my will being in submission to the Father. So can you see that which was a, a physical symbol in the Old Testament, I apply in the, in the spirit now, in, now as, as a believer in Yeshua, I now come and I follow that pattern and I move. And when I come with that heart, that's when I can move into the Holy of Holies. And so as a grain is ground to make bread, so my will is ground in submission to the Father. And then the Holy of Holies, where the Shekinah glory, the intimacy of prayer and relationship is. And that is that place where, where it's you and, 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 and God. There's nobody else there. It's you and God. And so that's, that is the pattern. It's always been and will always be the pattern. And anything else that's added for money, run away. Don't fall for the trick. Learn the word of God that you can discern what is the truth. We are told not to fear. I've shared some scary stuff with you, and you're saying, oh, Father God, this is truly the last days. But God says, don't fear, my children. So I want to just leave you with this word. Put on the helmet of salvation. The Father is in control. Doesn't matter what's going on, the Father is still in control. He's at work with his awesome plan of redemption. Our hope must be in Jesus. Amen? Amen. We will not fear. This is the day of the Lord. This is not Satan's day. This is God's day. Amen? It's the day of Jesus. He's going to show forth his mighty power. And, the, you know, it's like the devil has tried his very best to really mess up this world. But you know what? Jesus is still going to come through, and he's still going to put him on his place. He's coming through as King of kings and Lord of lords. This is the finest hour of Jesus. It's not the enemy's finest hour. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just thank you that we can end with this victory proclamation that no matter what is going on in the world, in the second heaven, you're in the third heaven and you reign. You reign from there, Lord. And we declare that over our families, over our marriages, over our children, Father, over our ministries, over our congregations, we declare you are Lord over South Africa. And we thank you for that, Father. Bless each one of us, Lord, as we just ponder what we've learned about the second heaven. And Father, thank you for giving us tools that we are able to discern, that we know how to pray when, when it's confusing. Because we know your word says, even the very elect, the enemy will try and deceive. But now we know how to pray. And we thank you for that, Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we just uh, ponder what we've learned. And uh, Lord, help us to, to put it in our hearts. And to, um, Lord, let, let us multiply this word, Father, so that we can go and help others that are maybe stuck or confused or maybe bound in, in, in areas of their lives. So prepare us for the next lesson, we pray, Father. As we all go home, Father, we just pray for protection and guidance for each one of us. Lord, speak to us tonight. Lord, let your corporate anointing rest upon each one of us. 
as we're working through this journey together this week and speak to us, Father God. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear what you want to teach us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.